Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to take a look at this electric guitar, specifically the bone nut that is installed. Um, it doesn't really fit. This is a parts guitar that was put together by my friend and a friend of mine, and it needs a new nut. So that's what we're going to do. Got a bunch of brand new nuts here. We're going to install it. Let me show you how to do that. Let's dive in. Okay, so there's a lot of ways you can do this. Uh, you can install a nut from a lot of different types of materials. I've even seen some guys that build nuts out of things like um, animal antlers or actual bones uh, from a, a literal living animal that would that died. Uh, and you now I'm sure you know this this bone comes from somewhere. But you know when I purchased these, I got this pack on eBay or Amazon or something for maybe like, I don't know, 20 or 30 bucks. And uh, this is just a pack of a bunch of bone nuts that were made in China. And there's a couple different things to think about. First of all, you really need to know the width of your existing guitar nut. Now nuts are usually measured in millimeters. And if I measure this one that is on there, 43 millimeters, which is a little bit too long. Uh, I, when I put my finger over, I can feel a little bit of a tang here because it's too long. This this far side is fine. And the other problem with this one is that the nut slots are just way too high. They haven't been cut down at all. So I'm going to install a new nut. Now, the next thing to be aware of is that the nut, nuts can have differences in how they're made. If you look at this one, this one here has a flat bottom which would need to match a flat bottom radius. Uh, certain types of guitars wish to see have, they kind of have a little bit of a curved radius. And so it's just a lot easier if you match flat with flat, curve with curve. So let's take this one out and uh, see what we've got underneath. Okay, so with a guitar nut that's already in, you need to be a little bit cautious, depending on how well glued it in is. If you just yank on this thing, you might chip out a little bit of the of the fretboard wood, and you really don't want to do that. So you need to be a little bit cautious with how hard you press or push on this thing. It's also maybe, uh, if you're having a really hard time, you can maybe even use a little bit of heat, but I just generally recommend using a little bit of upward pressure, um, especially if I've got a little bit of a tang here. If I just give it a little bit of upward pressure, that should usually pop it out. You can even use, like I've got a little screwdriver here that can maybe help me with that. Might flip it over like this and just give it a little bit of a pop. And right there, it just popped right out. So you can see this one actually has a curved bottom. Let's take a look at our fretboard here. Okay, so this other replacement definitely appears to have a flat bottom, but then second of all, you can see between comparing these two, this this replacement that I would be using is definitely a lot shorter, so it matches the width a lot better. So let's I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this new one. I've got a piece of sandpaper here. This is 120 grit. I'm gonna put it on a flat surface, and I'm just gonna uh, rub it against. The sandpaper until I it, it fits into the slot nice and snugly. And the best thing to do when sanding like this is you want to check it somewhat frequently. You know, once you've sanded too far and it becomes loose, it's really hard to add material back. It's not impossible. So I'm going to sand it for a little bit. Okay, so I thinned it down so it fits. But what I want to show you is, you can see it rocks. So that definitely is telling me 100%, even though the width on this new nut is correct, it needs to have a curved bottom. So, um, I have a couple options. I could buy a new nut that has the correct bottom. I could take this new one and add a curve to its bottom. Or I could continue to work with the original nut, even though it's not—it's a little bit too wide. 
And one other thing to keep in mind too about that, I don't know if you can see this, but the the spacing between the strings is going to be a little bit different. These outside strings on the old nut that was 43 millimeters is going to have a slightly wider string spacing. So I probably will end up having a conversation with my friend that owns this guitar to see what he wants to do as far as you know if he kind of likes that wider string spacing or not. So those are just some of the things to think about. Okay guys so I've got this is the original nut. It's too wide. Slut slots were too high. This is the replacement I've been using. I just took some sand sanding and I uh, made a curvature on the bottom so it would match. This was a flat bottomed nut. This was a curved bottom to match. So um, I just took my time, sanded it so that it matched directly, and now it sits in there perfectly with no rocking. So that's going to be a nice, perfect fit. I'm going to string it up like this and kind of test it out and then see if I need to probably dial in the nut slots or cut them a little bit shorter. But definitely this one thing about this nut is it sits a lot lower, which is really good. Um, so it might not need a ton of sanding, just kind of some fine tuning. And then once I do get the nut to a place where it's uh, exactly where I want it, I'll probably just put one little dab of super glue. I find that I personally don't love having nothing to hold the nut in. You know, especially if you're changing strings and you 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 don't know or you forget or especially if it's somebody else's guitar it's nice to keep it in there a little more securely but you don't want to put in a lot of glue because you do want this to be able to be removed sometime in the future so i'm gonna string it up play it see how i like it and go from there all right next i've put a capo on the third fret and i have a feeler gauge here that is measuring uh, 0 0.305 millimeters i'm going to place it here between the first fret and the string and I can see by looking at it that there is too much height there and so I'm going to remove that a little bit so uh, I've got a file here this file here is the right size for this uh, low E string I'm going to loosen, take off the capo loosen the string so it comes out and I'm going to start filing. Now, the angle at which you file is kind of important. You want to be flat to just ever so slightly pitched down this way so that the string kind of uh, has a little bit of an angle to pitch up against. What you really don't want is for it to be low this way because then the string isn't going to kind of use this as a launching point for which it will vibrate. So I'm just going to give this a little bit of filing here. Now, as I said before, you always want to be a little cautious about taking off too much material. Just do a little bit of filing, bring it back up to pitch. And I'm going to do my test again. Capo goes on the third fret, feeler gauge to check. Okay, you need a little bit more. And I basically just keep going this process back and forth till I get all the strings to sit just the right distance. Hey, it's Clay. Now that I've uh, got that new nut in here, I've, I've got it all the slots filed down exactly where I want them. Just one last final kind of little test that I do to make sure everything is going well is I just go up and down the fretboard making sure things don't fret out in a way that they shouldn't. I also like to check to make sure, it's like if my low E string is in tune, I got my tuner on right here, then I want to make sure this F note, if it's, if the distance, if the nut is too high, it'll have a tendency to pull it sharp. So that's another little test you can do. So uh, I think this guitar is playing and sounding really, really good. Um, it's a parts caster. It's kind of a 69 reissue 
but it has maybe 72 reissue, but it has some Seymour Duncan P rails type pickups, which are pretty cool. It, both of these, the volume and the tone pot are push pull. I actually have no idea what's doing what. I know there's a P90 coil here and then like a slug coil. I don't even know what you call like a rail coil here, rail and then P90. I believe you can do each of them individually or in series or parallel. And so I'm just going to mess around with a bunch of the different tone settings and kind of give you guys a feel for it. I'm just plugged straight into my Marshall Plexi into a two no, uh, torpedo captor and I'm running some uh, impulse responses. So let's get a, some tones.
All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, video. Hope it helps you tune your guitar, and if you got a nut slot that's a little problematic, uh, get, get some nut files and give it a, give it a shot. Uh, it's definitely doable and takes a little bit of practice, but it's definitely a skill you can achieve improve on. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. See you again soon. Thanks. Bye.